Riverbend Talent on the Big Z, brought to you by the Houghton Music Company and by Mr. Matt Van Voris, whose favorite band was Van Halen when he began. <laughs> I don't know if he'd admit that I, now. I thought he liked Van Morrison. Not even. See, I don't Van know. Van Halen or Van Hagar? Van Halen is what he said. So, yeah. Who named Van Halen? Uh, not Alex or Eddie. No, it was Dave. Yeah, it had to be Dave, yeah. sure. Yeah. You wouldn't think that, though. Yeah. You'd think he'd be like, let's call it the David Lee Roth Band. <laughs> yeah, I would think so. No. Uh, that he, dude was a paramedic. He, he was hoping that if he said, let's call it Van Halen, they'd go, no, we're going to call it David Lee Roth. <laughs> yeah. So he goes solo and becomes a paramedic. Yeah. True story. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's Can blood. you imagine getting rescued uh, by David Lee Roth? Uh, it, no. That's scary. Yeah, I, that somehow that's like scary. They were giving CPR, and he's like, "You might as well pump, <laughs> pump up your heart." <laughs> I don't know. I don't true. know either. I don't. We're know not either. talking about that anyway. We're talking about a different band called the Trophy Mules. The Trophy Mules. That's right. For, uh, welcome to the show, Corey Sadoff. What's up, Corey? It's great to be here, man. You say that now. We'll, we'll hey. see how you feel at the end of it all. Uh, I can take it. <laughs> how much of it can you take? Yeah, well, I guess <laughs> Just we'll see. Exactly. Exactly. There we go. So, hey, Corey is the singer-songwriter and, and acoustic guitar player mm -hmm. uh, with the Trophy Mules. And uh, I, I'm familiar with the Trophy Mules because Jared Gordon's in the band. Correct. And Jared Gordon is just one of the greatest guys. I mean, he he, he always he, I, I like hanging out with him because he he's so good, but he doesn't make you feel bad about being bad. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> when he sees you play and you're not doing real good, he's he's not like rolling his eyes or like laughing or whatever. He's like, oh, you know what? That, that, you're doing pretty good there. I'm like, ah, you're pandering, but thanks. Yeah, he's a su super nice guy. The whole whole uh, Gordon family. So yeah, he, he's uh, he's he's great in the band. He he helps us out with uh, just you know being a cohesive unit. I mean, he he's always talking about music, and he can relate to just about anyone's uh, proclivities. I mean, with, yeah. with music and everything. So he's he's either playing a show or going to a show or listening to music. So he's he's great to have on board. Also, see, see, Corey's the only one who showed, who, uh, showed up tonight for the interview. Jared, you know, as much as I love him, he, he doesn't like to talk. Correct. Yeah, well, Correct. you know, he's checking his son out at a live performance at the conservatory he, tonight, so you yes. got to give the thumbs All up right, there. We'll, we'll give him that. Yes. We do uh, usually talk about him when they don't show up, and he was on with Jake Weber in the Lonesome Drifters. He, he was just on. I'll give right. him that. So, yeah. It took a long time to get Jared on, though. Yeah, <laughs> but he showed up with that band. Tonight he's busy. And... Uh, so also uh, also in the band, so so Corey said, I feel the singer songwriter. We got Jared Gordon on bass, uh, Scott Scott Schwartz, is that right? Mm -hmm. And he's main, usually a steel pedal steel pedal mostly, steel player, some electric guitar, yeah. little electric guitar, mainly a pedal steel player yes. for the band. Also in Prairie Rehab. Yes, we also have videos for that. Yeah, yeah. That Prairie Rehab is a, a good act. I uh, so he he plays with them along with his wife, correct? Mm -hmm. So yeah. there you go. Uh, and then what, Josh Keen? Josh Keen, uh, he has he contributed three originals to this new album. He's oh. been with us a few years now. He does about everything. He's a great singer, great guitarist, uh, great piano slash keyboardist. I mean, he's he's a utility man. He's a yeah. great utility man. Put him Definitely. in wherever. I like oh, it. Yeah. I like it. Mm -hmm. Play some lead. Mm -hmm. Throws it down. Yeah, the, the you know what the problem with Josh is? He doesn't show up to every gig, but we'll get into that later. <laughs> he's very keen, though. He's, he's very, very keen, keen about it. On top of it. He's peachy keen. Another yeah. buddy playing drums. Yeah, from the Dave Clark Five. <laughs> no, Fake news. Not from yeah. the Dave Clark Five. But his name is Dave Clark, uh, the the uh, the great drummer, Mr. Dave Clark. Uh, play. Dave plays in so many bands. He, he and he plays every kind of music. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, yeah, he's he's just uh, he's a great great person and great drummer there. So that is um, the, the the five of you make mm -hmm. the Trophy Mules. Correct. And you guys are gonna be playing uh, Trinity River Fest. Uh, this Saturday, 
Wow. Friday. See? Friday. This Friday. This Friday. That's right. Well, I'll have to look at the lineup. Okay, I, I, tell I everyone we're recording in advance, and you tried to play like I, I did. I did. I, it it took didn't work me, out. It took me just a <laughs> second. I was like, what week is this right now, and when are we going to be airing this? Yeah, we recorded this in advance, but when you're hearing this, yeah. it, it'll be this Saturday, yeah. uh, June, uh, this Friday, June, June second. 2nd. Yep. Uh, June 2nd. So there you go. And you guys are playing. Uh, hey, let me see here. I'm trying to get to get it to pop up. Uh, you guys are playing at uh, 7 p.m. Yes. So uh, there you go. Just to give everybody out there in in uh, the radio world the lowdown on what Trinity River Fest is, if you don't have any idea. It's a festival been going on for years. Uh, Trinity's Way puts it on. Trinity'sWay.org is where you can find out more about them, but they are a great uh, uh, nonprofit that uh, works to help animals, uh, disadvantaged animals in the area, and also uh, cleans up the parks, cleans up the roadways, constantly see them out there just walking, picking up trash. So, uh, yeah, and, it's a pet peeve, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shouldn't have to be done, but someone's got to do it, yeah, yeah. I, you know, and and I, you know, I knowing the people behind this, I've been part of some of these cleanups, but when I'm not a part of it, it is always fun to like drive by when my wife's picking up trash and just chuck a can at her. Mm. Or whatever. No, I don't do that, I don't oh. do that. <laughs> uh, had, so, had a pretty windy April, yeah. and the bad thing about wind is. More trash, more trash to pick yeah. up, and that's that's trash that may not be someone's fault. That gets you know, one of them trucks lifts up the trash can, tries to dump it, and the wind blows. You know it, right. you know it. It, it. It's not just all blowing out of McDonald's right. parking lot. That's right. But most of it is not. Yeah. <laughs> Are people throwing it out their windows? Here right, right just chucking a milkshake. No one out. would do that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so there you go. You're uh, again Trophy Mules uh, playing 7 p.m. on Friday night, and and so the Trinity's uh, River Fest this year uh, being held in Campsville, uh, Illinois. If you're not familiar with Campsville, just head down the river road. You go past Grafton, you go past Pier Marquette. Yeah. Right after you cross the river, you take a right, and you're there in no time. That's why you have to so, camp in Campsville. You have to camp in Campsville. Exactly. Well, you don't have to. About an hour, I want. think, Violet said. Uh, it, it is. It was about a 50-minute ride uh, from my house to get there. So. Wait a minute. That was uh, Jacob that told me that yeah. when I was picking up my shrimp. Nice. Huh? He's like, I didn't know it was an hour away. I'm going to have to plan for that. <laughs> right. Not Jacob. Pulling. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah, the, it, it's I I drove out the other day to check out the property, and I think it was about fifty minutes from my, okay. from my house. I so trust you what you said. I don't know about Jacob. Yeah. Sometimes, oh, I know about him. He's crazy He's a as a loon. Nah, I don't know. He, I saw him howling at the moon, and the moon wasn't even out. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> Jacob's in like fifty bands. You can never keep straight what that kid's got going on, but he's always got a lot going on. Uh, speaking of Jacob, he's going to be playing. Yeah, uh, he will be playing Friday night. So. Uh, Anybody thinking about going out to check the trophy mules out? There's plenty of other things going. If you're like, it's a it's a 50 minute drive, yeah, but it's it's an all day affair. Uh, get started on Friday. It's it's an it's a two day affair. It's not an all day affair. It's an all weekend affair. It's a family affair. It is a family affair, uh, just like Sly and Family Stone says. Uh, but anyway, the uh, the uh, lineup for this year's Trinity River Fest. Uh, we're getting started 3:30 p.m. on the acoustic stage. Chris Miller. 445 on the acoustic stage, Jerry Carudi. 6 p.m., Aaron Joe. 715, Will Marsh, uh, who's for, with the band Silver Material, but he's going to be playing solo there at 715. 830, we got Ken and Linda. 945, Josh Gra Joshua Grassley and Friends. And then 11 p.m., G Dean Justice. That is the acoustic stage lineup. Friday night main stage, we got Silver Material kicking it off at 4 p.m. 530, Pie Saw Canyon. 7 p.m., we got the Trophy Mules. 830, Accidentally on Purpose. That's where Justin, not Justin, Jacob Pullen will be uh, trying to make it on time. So... 8.30, Jacob. That's when you got to be plenty. there. Plenty of time for him. Plenty of time. Uh, so there you go. Accidentally on purpose, 8.30 p.m. on Friday. You know, his dad always made it to Harden. You were with him. 
couple yeah. rides up there. Yeah, I, I was I, <laughs> his little Volkswagen GTI man. I still remember that thing. It was a it was a, a simpler time. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, ten, and then finally, after accidentally on purpose uh, is done, we got bring me the fires. 10 p.m. You so said it right. I know. Bring me the fries Bring is me. what I really want to say because I'm hungry and I want some fries. It's not yeah. that, it's not hard to figure out what's going on in my head, man. Right. What time are the Trophy Mules playing again? Trophy Mules playing at 7 p.m. So on which day? On the main stage, on the electrified stage. Which day? Uh, Friday. 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 So there you go. That's good because uh, we're looking forward to hearing songs from their latest relief no sooner than the moon. No sooner than the moon. And that's about how long it took to make. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, Corey? Uh, that is correct, sir. Let's talk to Corey about his stuff, not tell people about his stuff. Yeah. So sure. 2022 released uh, that album. Yeah, this past November. And uh, it took you a long time to record it because of everything that was going on prior to 2022. Correct. Uh, like I said, I uh, was, was talking about... Before we had some songs already, um, you know, done. It was just, you know, and then a couple kind of wrote themselves during the time we were recording because of what was going on. Um, but yeah, it took a long time. We had some health issues in the band. We had a couple of change outs with the band members. Some band members left, and we welcomed a couple other band members. So it, it was a process. A little rebuild process. going on in there. A little rebuild, yeah. Because you guys do play out in different versions of the Trophy Mules, depending on the venue. Depending on the venue, depending go... on availability, depending on a lot of things. We're all, you know, we all have jobs and everything going on with right. life, families. Other bands. Um, other bands. Yeah. It's hard to juggle everything, but we, we still find time to, to get together uh, as a five-piece. But a lot of times it's a, a four-piece or a three-piece or even an acoustic duo. So. And everybody lives like far away from each other too kind of yeah for the most part we're all you know generally in the st louis area but half hour here or there you know apart so. depending on traffic depending on traffic right correct so, so. you have to be pretty dedicated and we all are so yeah, yeah. pig pen lived in alton and uh we used to have practice in Cottage Chills, and he'd show up two hours late going traffic, guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> it's always, it's always you know, a card to play. Sometimes <laughs> it takes two hours to get from Alton to Cottage Hills. Yeah. I, I can't uh, give you any more specifics on right. why. Yeah. <laughs> so how long has the trophy mule been uh, kicking it? Oh, boy. Pun intended. Yeah, I would say... That long? Twelve years. Twelve. Woo! Yeah. That was before the world ended, almost. <laughs> yeah, it seems, like a, it seems like a long time ago. Uh, yeah. And in that time, you've put out three LPs so mm -hmm. far? Yep, three. Uh, what, was the, what was the first one? First one was Sorry Motel. That has ten songs on it. You remember when you stayed uh, there? Yeah. I, Pig Pen. I resided there for at least three months. <laughs> yeah. It's an actual place, though, right? Well, is a sign. I've seen the sign. <laughs> For some reason, sorry is really huge on the sign. I think it was just says mot most just says motel, but the sorry is on it. Oh, okay. Pretty prominently, so that's what we call it. Where was that at? It's uh, it, it was it, it's no longer there. The sign is still there. It's uh, just outside of Hecker, Illinois. Okay. Um, near New Athens, uh, down by where I, uh, my work and I live down that way now. Okay. And that's where we recorded that first one. I just saw it on the way to the recording. I was like. That's a cool yeah. sign, and it came the album cover and the, the album title. That's so. pretty cool. And what so, year was that? Uh, that was put out in 2013. See, I told you, it was right after the world ended. Yeah. And uh, It was right at the beginning of 2013. Had you guys been together long at that point? And I no. would imagine that was a different lineup, too. It was a different lineup. Um, none of the folks in that uh, incarnation are in the band anymore. Okay. I was the, I'm the only one left from that. So, uh, and you are Corey Satoff. That's correct. As opposed to Sat on. Yes. That's what he said. I'm I, I, I just kind of like you know. uh, Pat Morita from Karate Kid, only. Yeah. Sat on, Sat off. Right. Hey, it's a long name. I, I need yeah. to know how to say that. Right. S A A T H O F F. Correct. 
He might be battling Mike Sonderegger for most vowels and <laughs> consonants in a name. It's a, I don't know. <laughs> set off. Yeah. There's an H in there, see? I got to yes. pronounce it slightly different now. Yeah, how'd you uh, get into music? I don't know. I, I, writing was the the main uh, catalyst. I, I, I'm a writer by trade. I, I, I'm a editor of a newspaper down okay. in Monroe County. So We're interviewing uh, the press, big man. Yeah. And, uh, but, so I've always liked to write and I started getting into like poetry and stuff. And, and then finally I was motivated. I think it was a, a broken heart, a broken relationship okay. that finally pushed me. I was like, I want to write some songs. And, there you uh, go. That's started, a good topic. In college. So what, what paper do you write for? It's the Republic times right. uh, down in Waterloo and Columbia, Illinois. Because you had these other bands, Jerkwater Junction, and that was my first band. Yeah, Brain Regiment. Brain Regiment. Yeah. <laughs> I love like his that. band names. Yeah. So the first uh, band, when was that? Well, I was still in college, uh, eons ago, ninety seven. Mm. Ninety seven, ninety eight was when we started, and then that ended probably about two thousand one. Any releases for that band? Not. Uh, Not available. Well. I have some. You got a cassette to, somewhere in a, in a box or something. Let's trade cassettes. Yeah, I think nothing, we should do that. Nothing, uh, you know, tangible. Really, they, they had five hundred cassettes made. He has four hundred ninety of them in a box, right. just like all of us. Same dust, as me. Dust it off. Dust them off. And, I know the story. I've yeah. lived this story. Actually, he was way smarter. He just made up each cassette. <laughs> It was called Chunkage Contained. Yeah. And he took a pi- a picture of what looked like vomit, but mm-hmm. it wasn't. It was pea soup or something. I, I, I Look, we, we actually, we tried to use the real thing, and it just, it, it never looked quite right. Right. Yet, okay. you know, I mean, it didn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're like, I, I know this is the real deal, but it just looks too plain. Yeah, so, so. was that a punk rock band? No, it was no? It's kind of a uh, crappier version of the band. I'm okay. Sound I do know. Oh, honestly, I mean, so like, I, we, yeah, I, the songwriting was there. I had the right ideas. I just didn't have the, yeah. the talent at the time. The I was just starting, and so we're, and the guys were all college buddies, and uh, we, you know, we we had fun doing it, and we started, you know, get some shows in St. Louis and such. But uh, I thought you know. Junction might be kind of the same, but then I seen the next one, and I'm like, Brain Regiment. That yes. had to be punk rock, no? Indie rock. Indie rock, okay. Yeah, Let's... I was getting a big, uh, so I kind of wanted to do a departure from Jerkwater Junction, more, of the, you know, the country rock, roots rock sound. I wanted to go a little bit more indie, a little uh, more fuzzy, I guess you'd say. And I was getting, I was big into uh, bands like Gotta By Voices at the time. And so, I, but the, my uh, Midwestern uh, roots, I guess, still, you could still kind of hear them in, in the brain regiment stuff. I never really could get away from it too much. Yeah. I just wear it. I wear it on my sleeves. So then you started the trophy mules. Then, uh, yeah, brain regiment split up and, uh, I went right into writing some songs, uh, similar to my first band, Jerkwater Junction and, and formed it. Got a good group of guys just from networking, being around in the scene and going to shows. Um, I, you know, I guess I built up enough of a reputation to to attract pretty good musicians, and I just formed Trophy Mules, and cool. been doing that for for a while now. I forgot to ask where you went to college. Greenville College. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, or Greenville University now. Ooh. But that's <laughs> not not too awful far. From they got Godfrey beat. Just yeah. saying, Big Van were Community yeah. College. Yeah. You know. So what about the name, the Trophy Mules? Yeah, people ask that a lot of time. I, you know, we were really struggling. You know, kind of like Van Halen, uh, <laughs> struggling to think of a name. You guys remind I, me of them. It was <laughs> yeah. It was going. It was you know we had already booked a couple of shows as just my name and I. Yeah, no. I don't want. I, we got to find something and the Trophy Mules was just kind of just popped out there. I, I think it kind of is indicative of our sound and our kind of demeanor, like, I don't know, what do you think of a trophy, a mule, don't, you know, not winning right. really trophies, but hardworking and stubborn. And uh, so we're stubborn about good music, I guess, is what one person said. I was, yeah, that'll work. I don't think but, they judge mules at the uh, state fair, right? It's pigs and cows usually. Maybe in Missouri. The state fair I go to, they do. They do? Maybe yeah, in Missouri. Oh, yeah. I think Missouri, they're, 
You know, okay. They care more about the mules over there. So okay. I saw a mule wet T-shirt contest once. I was the judge. Well, I'm not going to talk about the donkey show I seen. We wouldn't be uh, able to on it. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy. In the Philippines. <sighs> <laughs> I wasn't going to talk about it, I know. But uh, Corey Sadoff <laughs> decided to name his much. band <laughs> the Trophy <laughs> Mules yeah. because Corey Sadoff would not have been the name he wanted to go with. He might have had to dress up in like a karate uniform and do Sadoff sat on. Yes. Right? Exactly. So that wasn't that working. Want to do that. He wanted to go with the mule, the hardworking mule. Mm-hmm. And uh, so. Well, I didn't really think about it too much. At it the just time. popped out. It just out. popped out. Yeah. You but know, that's after, the best. Afterwards, I was like, yeah, it fits. Yeah, it, it's we a good, it's we a good have one. trouble with band names, as, as we've noticed over the years, that, you know, there's they're harder and harder to find. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He called his band the Sandwich Band and found one in the Philippines. Yeah. You, you would think that nobody would name their band after sandwiches, but <laughs> <laughs> apparently. Yep. You know? Right. Uh, so we're seeing which, more and more band names with numbers in them now. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So it's so, getting tougher. And now you can Google that stuff, find out if it's been used, and that kind of thing. Right. In the old days, you had to say, you know, you could name your band Jimi Hendrix Experience, but you don't know. <laughs> you don't know if there's <laughs> you, one really you out know there. If there's yeah. another one out there or not. <laughs> so, uh, so there you go. So the, uh, the what, what year did the the Trophy Mules come together again? 2013 is the first release. That was the first but, release. I'm going to guess probably right around then. Uh, probably about 2010. 2010. Mm. Before right, the world ended. There and go. then 2013 was Sorry Motel. What was the second album? Sunset Collapse. Yeah. That was a six six song uh, EP, I guess you'd say. But. See, they were around when, when the world ended, so they knew. Yeah. And it, it, what year that was, was that? 2016. 2016, yep. Now, was that lineup uh, a mix of now and the original or a well, whole different lineup? Scott is in that band. Okay. Uh, was in the band at that point, and like I said, he helped on the production of that one, and Dave Clark was our drummer on that one. Okay. Now, the funny thing is, Dave Clark is not the drummer on our new one. Oh, okay. He, he just rejoined the band. Uh, he had to step aside for a minute. Yeah, he stepped aside, and he was focusing mainly on the swag. Right. Because they were very busy. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, super busy. And now he's kind of evened out his schedule, I guess, to, to better, you know, play in the rich, more original bands again and, our other drummer, he kind of wanted to move on, um, and Dave was the first guy I called, and he was, hell yeah, I'll play with the guys again. So we're happy to have him back. So Scott was in that band. How about Josh? Josh, jo- he joined it um, kind of as we were getting this one going. Uh, Larry Rosenhofer, who, who was in on Sorry Motel and Sunset Collapse, big foundational part of the, of the Trophy Mules, he just... He was just done with music. He kind of retired from it, I guess you would say. And uh, and Josh had f- served as a fill-in on bass for us. Well, our drummer at the time, Simon, who recorded on this album, try to follow along here. Okay. <laughs> um, like I said, it's been I'm a long moving part. He said that Josh is great at singing and playing guitar and keyboards. I just knew him as a bassist. And uh, so I said, well, let's give it a shot. And it turned out Josh is phenomenal. So he he, he became a huge part. It's almost like, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Wilco. Yeah. When when Wilco kind of got, uh, you know, Jay Bennett on board for like, what, their second, third, and fourth albums. He just brought, he was so omnipresent that it, you know, he was just a huge part of the band. So that's so- kind of what... This became what this project is. Josh has, he's all over it because. Uh, so does Scott do most of the guitar work then on that second album? On the second album, Sunset Collapse, Larry, it was about 50 50. Okay. Yeah. Because there's some trade off solos and it rocks a little harder yes. than the new one, I would say. Yes. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. And Larry brought more of the rock edge and uh, okay. Scott more of the finesse, uh, you know, tasteful, country ish kind of cleaner guitar. Okay. So. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> the new record, Pigpen, sounds amazing. And what's the name of the new record? No Sooner Than the Moon. No Sooner Than the Moon. And they I mean, just you can hear every, every note. This is just a crystal clear recording, beautifully layered, and uh, well, yeah, it's, it's great. That. 
Scott, like I said, Scott Swartz is the he's the wizard behind that. So did, did he? You guys do it yourself? Uh, did it ourselves at his, at his nice. basement studio. Correct. Nice. There you go. And I think uh, now that I know it's a different guitar player, it makes way more sense too. Because I think Josh plays with the music. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, you know. And there's some really interesting work between Scott and Josh, kind of mm -hmm. doubling parts. And yeah, uh, correct. There were times I couldn't even tell if he was doing it with steel guitar or regular guitar. Uh, specifically uh, in the song uh, Hurricane Heart, there's a double lead in there that I listen to over and over trying to figure out it. It sounds like he's doing steel with a lead. It could be really both. cool. Yeah. Or yeah, he, and he could he could have played his own. He could have recorded both himself, or it could have been. Uh, you know, I'd have to, you know, it's hard to remember who did what. <laughs> but I I know he he could mimic with the steel what the guitarist was doing on guitar, or he could do both himself. Yeah, he's that talented. So yeah. it really sounded awesome. awesome. That's that's for sure. Uh, but my favorite is Val Meyer on the album. And uh, that was, is that a true story? That, uh, yeah, that's based you went, on a true story. Yeah. You went that's, down on our, that's on the Sunset Collapse album. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's probably our most, I, I hate to say streamed, because that's where it is now. You know, you get, hmm. we get paid like a sixteenth of a penny if you stream our songs <laughs> on, online. Right. But that is the one. I want to say I had that on the playlist for the uh, the new album, actually, that I was no, listening that's to. that's on the, the old one. Hmm. But, Tricked me. Yeah, hmm. but yeah, stinky algorithms. That is a uh, true story about the flood of '93, um, Valmar, 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah. So that the town packed up and moved to higher ground. So, yeah. So was you uh, down there and witnessing some of that? And... Well, I, I I live down in those parts now, so I, I know all the after effects. But I do remember when it actually happened. I, I graduated from high school that year, and uh, uh, I remember you know driving down that way to see you know because everyone drove down that way to check it out because it was all on, on the news and in the right. national news so i remember it we had it right here in our living room yeah you guys had it definitely yeah. right in the front door <laughs> yep and well, yeah that's a that's a true story about you know being pers you know persevering so, so i noticed some fiddle on the uh, new album that or, was on Valmeyer, yeah. That was that's on the. Old oh, okay. One. See, I keep thinking that. I listened to that song a few times. It was a good yeah, one. That, that, that's Matt McGivney. It, I wondered if that yeah. was Matt. That was Matt McGivney. Yep. Mm -hmm. I knew him from well Dave, through Dave Clark. Also, uh, they were at a band called the Blue Skies. Yep. They played around here. We actually did a couple shows here with them in Alton, and uh, so I knew Matt from that, and knew he could, heck of a fiddle player. So yeah. he had him play on that song. Cool. Indeed, a heck of a fiddle player. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. They, yes. Uh, yeah, so the, uh, the blues guys kind of forgot about those guys. Kind of forgot Dave was, was a Yeah, a, a he was a drummer, yeah. So, yeah. There you go. Lazy Lester was a part of that. Uh, oh, Lance from Lazy Lester. I think he was playing bass on that one. Jared Gordon was in now. Blue Skies, too. Was he? Yes, yeah. See, it's, it's hard to keep it all straight. Goodbye. All, Goodbye, all, Blue all, Skies. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. You're, you're my blue sky. <laughs> you're my sunny day. Okay. So we doing the Alma Brothers. We doing Pink Floyd. We don't we do know. ELO too. We, it could be ELO. So All yeah. right. I'm calling the mercy rule on this one. <laughs> <laughs> that is on the new album. Uh, What's Mer that? Mercy no, rule. No, that's on. The Dang! Ah, I must have been listening <laughs> to the wrong three. album. <laughs> okay. Sunset Collapse. Let me take it that's back. That's on mercy rule. Also, that album there sounds amazing. Sunset Collapse. Yeah. yeah well, that's. A lot of we still play a lot of those songs, uh, and Scott was part of that too. So and Dave was on the drums, so yeah. So that's I got some re listening to do. You're gonna have to go back and figure it out, aren't you? I am. Which one was which? So so the Sorry Motel is the rocking one. Sorry Motel, right? yes, that was pretty straight rock. So yeah. I got to go with Sunset. I got to go back and check out the new one. No sooner than the moon. Yes. With twelve songs. Twelve, yes, twelve songs. That's like a full album, that full a, release, <laughs> Big Ben. I love a full release. Yeah, <laughs> we already have other new ones that uh, we're working on. So. Well, I would tell you about the uh, new album, but uh, obviously I was listening to the wrong album. 
<laughs> well, you can tell, talk, talk about any of the tell songs. Tell us about the old albums. <laughs> right. So, so uh, what's some of the songs on No Sooner Than the Moon? Well, yeah, one of them is, uh, like I said, Piron. That's a town, the small town I grew up in. Um, it's just kind of a, you know, a, oh, I don't know how you'd say reflective or, you know, thinking back of, you know, simpler times when we were growing up and everything. Um, Blood Red Cardinal, that's kind of a jammier song of ours. Uh, that gets, that's gotten some attention. Uh, I guess that's the way you say goodbye. That's the one we, we've done, uh, we did a live video for on, uh, that you can see on YouTube, uh, from a, it was called the Subterranean Boat Show. Kind of <laughs> like a, uh, kind of like a, uh, lower, you know, lo-fi, uh, I don't know what you call it. Boat public show? <laughs> public access kind of okay. situation, but yeah, you can see us performing that. Um, another good song, "Cold Comfort." That one's kind of a rocking number, kind of a almost like a country rock type song. So it's sub subterranean showboat was the show they were on episode, boat yeah, episode forty four. Subterranean boat show. Yeah. Yep. We filmed it at Utopia Studios there in, in St. Louis, kind of by uh, Cardinal Glennon Children's oh, Hospital, nice. and uh, they had a room set up, and uh, we played that song and two others and did a little interview. So. Yeah, that's where I got some information there from that interview. I, well, I thought you were a real boat show, like there was yeah. boats being oh, sold uh, behind you while oh, you were playing. That would have been cool. That that's what cool. I was thinking. Yeah. That's what so I that's was That's why thinking. I was going with showboat. I think we should do that sometime. <laughs> showboat. I don't know. Show boat but, uh, at the boat show. As long as we don't capsize. <laughs> See, we're just coming up with new songs, right? Right. Capsize. Right. Right yep. uh, uh, so you were playing again uh, this Saturday evening at Friday. The, Friday, I'm sorry. See, I'm, I'm, I got it all wrong. This Friday evening at the uh, Trinity River Fest, which uh, your 7 p.m. Is, is your approximate kickoff time mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Uh we went through the uh, Friday lineup, just so everyone knows it's going on Friday and Saturday. Uh, camping is part of the whole deal, so if you drive down and you want to stay, there's there's going to be camping. And uh, Saturday, it gets, if you do come down Friday night and you stick around for Saturday, if you decide to camp, uh, the music gets kicked off at noon. If you don't camp, then just get back, get up and come back early. Uh, music gets kicked off at noon on the acoustic stage with Lauren Waters. 115, Nancy Lippincott. 230, our Ropo. <laughs> the old Ropo, Darian Ropo. Uh, 345, Psychedelic Symphony. 5 p.m., Sawyer Conkle. 615, Gabe Brady and M. 730, The Divine March. 845, Paper Boulders. And then 1115, Ryan and Brandon. That is the Acoustic stage on Saturday. Saturday's main stage, we got Modern Pasta, Band Number 9, Agents of the Free Cricket and the Grilled Avocados, The Peace Lords, Ninja Don, Darian Ropo hitting the stage again, Electrified this time, and then Spilly Nelson. Uh, that is the Saturday lineup. Again on Friday, 7 p.m., we got the Trophy Mules. And so uh, you, you guys... Uh, Going down as a uh, as a four piece because Plans Josh piece. Keen has better stuff to do. <laughs> he, he's you know we, we just like to tease the guys. Yeah, he doesn't have better up. stuff to do, but he he's, he's not even he's doing not anything. Gonna, he's gonna be he's gonna be sitting home watching right. Murder She Wrote probably. or something. No, I, I don't know. Come uh, on. But yeah, there you go. You guys uh, uh, going down? Gonna be slinging your albums? Gonna have copies of the albums here? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm stealing. No, right now. Yeah, sure. I need one of those. I listened to the wrong album. Listening to this the is wrong. the one you listened to. And that's no the, sooner than that's the new one. So there you go. We got. I like them both. Oh, I'm sure. And uh, you guys opened up for some people too. Oh yeah, we've along had the way. we've had a lot of uh, we've been fortunate to have a lot of uh, opening performances. Uh, Shooter Jennings was yeah, one. Yeah, uh, heard he him. He played a barbecue Memorial Day barbecue. At uh, the Atomic Cowboy, right out, okay. outside the Atomic Cowboy, there in uh, the Grove, that's called. Yeah. And uh, we we played as part of that. That was in really the cool. pavilion. Yeah. 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 You get to meet him? Uh, very briefly. Oh, okay. 
Just kind of like, hey, how's it going? I guess Waylon wasn't there. No. No. He was long deceased. Oh, bummer. <laughs> Rest in peace, Waylon. Yeah. One of my but, favorites. Yeah, we've but yeah, we've had we've Let's been see. blessed to open up for some some good acts. I'm not sure who some of these are. I do know who the bottle rockets are though. That was for me. That was an, uh, probably a experience of a lifetime. I did a, a solo acoustic opening act set uh, prior to shoot prior to Brain Regiment. Okay. So that would have been, and it wow. was at a place called the Galaxy on just, Washington yeah, Avenue. Yeah, just like, you yeah. and your guitar. Just me and my guitar. Opening it for the Bottle Rockets. Then there, yeah, it was myself. I you a big fan stuff. of them? Oh yeah, I love yeah. them. Yeah, one of my favorite bands ever. So uh, that's awesome when you get yeah, to do that. It is. And How'd you get that gig? I don't know. Some guy called up and said, "Okay, I'll do it." Yeah. I, it was just again, I, you know, playing out in the scene, and that that was the style of music that was, you know, yeah, al- alternative country, I guess you would say. Um, I don't know if really couple, what that means, but a couple of the guys from the Bottle Rockets have a side project that they play in this tiny little bar down outside DeSoto, Missouri, like all the time together. Is it a, Diesel Island? I think that's what yeah. it is, yeah. It's like uh, classic country covers. Right. Yeah. yeah. I've yeah, seen them. The little, the little side project, yeah. So there you go. I'm not sure who Chris Knight is. He's uh, he's pretty well known, like uh, more like in the Arkansas, uh, south of here. But he's he's had some national uh, exposure. But, yeah, we've opened for him twice. Webb Wilder? Webb Wilder. He's a Nashville guy. Um, he Again, he's another... One of those Americana roots rock um, guys that is pretty popular. So Sons of Bill, Sons of Bill again, another one that's I, I didn't really know of them until we we asked were asked to open at Old Rock House for them and yeah um, I listened to them and I was like man it's good stuff cool how about American Aquarium yes they're I'm not sure of them but uh, they're pretty popular. Okay. Um, they're on the, I think, the North Carolina. They're a North Carolina band, but they are nationwide now. Um, I've they seen were, their name around. They were just getting going when, when we got the, uh, you know, f- fortunate call to open up for them. So, so there you go. Bobby Bear Jr. opened up for him. I was going to mention that. And Mara. Mara, Mara and yeah. Bobby Bear Jr. Yeah. Right. Uh, they're, uh, I think they're a New Jersey band. They're kind of more... More on the rock side of uh, country rock, but they're pretty well known too. I don't know if they're still going on. You know, if they're still active. Mm. I put were. this one on the list just for you, Big Ben. Slobber Bone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's, that's a good. That's a good band. I knew like you'd that. like that for some I reason. I do like that one. Sure, Quarter Junction opened up for them. <laughs> I'm not sure. The who side they door. <laughs> okay. The side door in St. Louis. I don't know if you ever remember that place. So yeah, was, some pretty cool, cool gigs in a short span of time there. Really. Yeah. Well, it's been. It's the whole time you're writing this new album. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> not not. Seems many, like it though. Not, yeah. Not many uh, while we were writing the album because. Uh, not many shows were going on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I know how it is uh, to spend all that time on an album. Six years is a long time, and you got it out finally at the uh, end of last year, and uh, mm-hmm. I listened to the wrong album. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> well, it means you, you have something to look forward to. I do have a question about Mercy Rule. Yeah. This could be a personal question. I'm not exactly sure. That's why I'm asking this question, but there's a part of that song where you name somebody. Mm-hmm. That I think you're singing about in the song Mary Lou, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, and I'm pretty sure you give the last name. Am I wrong? I couldn't quite tell what you're saying, but I'm no. like, did he just give her entire name in the no. song? Because no. I, I didn't catch what that part was, but I kept trying to figure it out. No, no, it just, and that wasn't even real. I just, Made up a name. Okay. For the song. I was hoping so because <laughs> but it was, no no last names were used. In the that was a heartbreak song, and uh, he yeah. was calling for the mercy rule. Yes, you got it. <laughs> so had to, had to right call on. her out by name on it. Apparently, <laughs> right on. <laughs> he it. did. Mary Lou. Uh, Mary Lou Retina. Names have been changed to hide the identity. Yes, it, it's to, it's it's the way it goes. Yeah, I had to get down to that. Been changed to protect the innocent. There are no innocent. I thought oh, Mary Lou might be made up, but then I thought that might be actually the name because it's yeah. Mary Lou. Mary Lou Retina. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I got to ask this question. It's kind of an addendum. It's like a, the sequel to uh, CCR's Hello, Mary Lou. 
<laughs> I forget the name of the album, but I've never been into hip hop. But I heard the Dr. Dre album when he left whatever band he was in. It's like his first solo release. The Chronic? Yeah. Yeah. And the first song, he's naming band members and what they oh, did. Yeah. To him. <laughs> I'm like, wow, <laughs> is this real? Yeah. And I kind of got that. Just man, just yeah, burn just burn them. Them right <laughs> I started just thinking keep... about that in Mary Lou, and I'm like, did he just do what I think he did? Because, like, you know, that's not hip hop. He's yeah. doing Americana and pulling names out, going. <laughs> I never thought I'd be compared to Dr. Dre, but <laughs> hey, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> I'd Same say, era, right? Yeah. Chronic. I hear a lot 90s. of people say, those trophy mules, they remind me of Dr. Dre. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that now. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, oh! Hey, well, you there just you go. Just, 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 just co- it just caused myself work. What am I doing? Write that uh, down, folks. Next uh, time Brian Murray's in, I'm going to tell him about that. <laughs> Rochelle Stratton. Oh, You know, shit. he did it. In, oh, <laughs> She didn't just do it again, I did didn't you? do it. Okay. I, somebody else did it. I, I didn't do it. Corey Sadoff, congratulations on the new album. I'm sure you guys are going to be playing quite a bit of that on the... Uh... Yeah, probably uh, half from that and, and some from the the Sunset Collapse album that you you talked about right. here. So I love so much. And uh, so you guys don't play out a lot, though, do you? Oh, we have we have quite a bit coming up. Um, even even with all the hard to get together stuff, huh? Yeah, yeah. So uh, you want to plug some stuff you guys might be doing, or uh... sure. I mean, f- first is the the Trinity Fest on on Friday, and then uh, we we're playing the uh, food truck Friday event at Tower Grove Park. Okay, um, that's June twenty third. They're they're always on Fridays, food truck Fridays. Sounds um, good. <laughs> yeah, I'm but, down. Uh, they, they have probably 30 40 food trucks all gathered in a circle and nice park can, too tower grove park and free show for people to come come out and nice hang out we've done that a couple years now sounds like a good time um oh uh, we play down at point Labity, missouri uh they're, they're a nice brewery down there boy that the memory escapes me uh or the, the date escapes me um you'd have to go to our website the trophy com. that's in august uh, we got some other full band performances in August. Uh, a lot of duo, acoustic duo and trio okay, performances yeah. between now and then. So do the wineries and stuff over do here? The wineries. Uh, I haven't really played much over here. Come on down. We, we, I, I'd love to. We play a lot uh, closer to St. Louis and on on the Metro East side there, yeah. like Collinsville, Edwardsville, Millstadt, Belleville. But yeah, I'd love to play more here in Alton. I, the times I've played here, I've, I've loved it. I bet he's played down at Experience Live Music Row down in Belleville. Yeah. <laughs> One of the venues, let me guess. Copper Fire? No. No? They're more of a... Uh, I was just trying to guess. Th- they have more... Uh, those are more of like the, you know, Casey. I don't know if you'd say okay. Casey, but like straight cover. Classic rock bands. Yeah. yeah. And okay. we, we're, you know, even when we do acoustic duos for three, four-hour gigs, we're still playing mostly originals. Where were you guys at the venue? Uh, Benny, we play at Benny's Pizza Benny's Pub. Pizza. We also play at Seven. Uh, it's called Seven. Right. Yeah. Um, right. So, we, yeah. We've been impressed with what they're doing down there with that Experience Live Music Row where they all got together and kind of promoted as yes. one big thing with a sponsor and everything. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's what you need to do. I mean, it, I, I, we, we really appreciate it as musicians that – the effort is being made like that. Yeah, I'd so. seen you guys played down there a little bit, mm-hmm. but Collinsville is about as close as you get to us, huh? Um, we had a flood up in Grafton. <laughs> Heard about that? <laughs> well, we're we're trying. We're we're trying. <laughs> Campsville. There you go. Uh, yeah, going to Campsville on June. That's way uh, past June second. <laughs> yeah. So and the, and the uh, the place that that you're going to be playing up there, it's called the Macaulay Project. Which you're like, what what in the world's the Macaulay Project? So. I went and checked it out. Uh, it is the, an old farm, the Macaulay Farm, and it is a beautiful farm with some like protected wetlands and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I, as near as I can tell, the family just, you know, it's after generations, nobody wanted to farm it, so they turned it into mm-hmm. this uh, you know, kind of a campground to right. preserve the farm. There's a log cabin in the middle of it that, that looks like, you know, the original settlers from the... Uh, uh, camping on the river, you know, setting up a log cabin on the river back in the 1800s or whatever. Uh, but it's a it's a pretty interesting place out there. Uh, everybody, come on out there. Uh, Any uh, chupacabras? 
Any uh, Chupacabra? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, Probably. I, I don't want to talk about it. Probably. Well, it's on the new album, Chup- <laughs> Chupacabra Valentine. <laughs> It's what it's called, Big Ben. <laughs> that, I wish I would have listened to that song. <laughs> I wish you would have, too. That's a good one. I, 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 I may be, uh, you know, biased. biased. Right. <laughs> Tooting your own horn. Yeah. Did, I don't think I've video. ever seen a Chupacabra song until now. I Well, and the fact that no, it's yeah. a love song. A Valentine. <laughs> is it a love song well, about just, a Chupacabra? It's a Valentine. It's a dark, it is a dark love song. A okay. spooky love song. I'm sure. I'm sure. Aren't full speed lobotomy is not a dark song, though. <laughs> full speed lobotomy. That. That's a busy, uh, confusing song. Oh, a lobotomy would be a busy, it, confusing. It's better thing. than a half speed lobotomy. I'm right. gonna say that right now. So yeah. So what I do a lot of times is, uh, you know, I kind of, I like to use unique wordplay. Yeah, I writer. can see that. I like um, that. But I, what I try to do, you know, the words kind of come to me, and. Like I try to f- fit a theme that would match that. So I don't know if you call it like a whisper track or if you're, you're strumming a guitar and writing a song and the melody is coming to you and you're just kind of, you know, the yeah. words aren't come, are just forming. And for like Chupacabra Valentine, that wor- the, that came out. And I was like, what am I supposed to do with this? Yeah. Well, then I built a song around that and I think I've captured what that would might be. Did you have to rhyme something with Chupacabra Valentine? I can't wait to listen um, to it now. Chupacabra's or is that one. word even in the song? Oh, yeah. It it's, is. It's the, okay, it's okay. the chorus. Just yeah. checking. Sometimes you uh, just rhymes with val- I think there's, yeah, the end of it rhymes with Valentine, but nothing okay. else. Valentine's Chupacabra. easier to rhyme than the <laughs> Chupacabra. <laughs> right. <laughs> That'd be pretty I'm amazing. Down, I like to, to go for the hard ones there. So Yeah. Nice. Okay, I can't wait to listen to this. Mm-hmm. A sense of me, of course, that's about John Keane, right? Or Josh. Josh. Sorry. Yeah, kind Josh, of small writing. Under. Josh wrote A Sense of Me, and he wrote uh, Cure for the Common Blues, and he wrote Wish You, Wish Wish you, you well. well. And that, that's his COVID song. It was about, okay. you know, he wrote that during COVID and about COVID and, you know, how he basically wasn't able to hang out with people, so he was wishing them well because he, well, so they didn't die of the pandemic and it's because he had can't see or hang out with them right that's that's a pretty moving song so. he sang a song on episode 44 of that thing you guys were on tv subterranean whatever boat show, boat yeah. show. subterranean boat show mm-hmm. <laughs> the boats float below? I, uh, I don't know uh, it's showboat no, it's, it's a boat, boat show. show. It's a boat it's a show. boat show. Yeah, right. I've, I've been doing like you all night, just flipping stuff around yeah. however it comes out. I like it. I like it like that. <laughs> I turn the world I upside down. I think I'm down catching what you got or yeah. something. So. But uh, all right, well, I'm hey. looking for my Chupacabra Valentine right I, now. I think it'll be a good one. I don't I'm know looking. if it's one. I don't know if it's a Valentine you want to find. Oh well, <laughs> listen to the song and let me know. You think I want a hurricane heart? Because I don't know if I want it's one of those. Kind of same, I, same idea. Seem seemed kind of sad. Yeah. yeah. You like yeah. sad songs? I write a lot of yeah. sad songs. Yeah. All because of that sad one breakup, huh? Songs. Boy, that Mary Lou really did it, didn't she? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she did. Mary Lou. <laughs> hey, funny. you got to have inspiration, right? June Carter. Probably. <laughs> I don't well, know. He, you know, he was asking about the Mary Lou name, and, and the truth is he couldn't really call out real names because if he would have said Bruce Jenner. No, he called I, out I, Val Meyer. Val Meyer's a real name. <laughs> there was really a flood there, so I had well, to ask. That's true. Uh, so. Our guest is Corey Satoff, and Corey is the singer-songwriter of the Trophy Mules and a guitar player also uh, mm-hmm. of the Trophy Mules who will be playing June 2nd in Campsville. Uh, at the Trinity River Fest, and that's happening at the place called the Macaulay Project in Campsville, Illinois, June 2nd and 3rd. Lots of good music, uh, lots of good times going on down there. Looking forward to checking out the show on, yeah. on Friday. We're excited. We're excited yeah. to be playing it. Uh, it's a great a great thing that, you know, that organization does, so we're happy to be a part of it. Jared Gordon who brought up previously, he, he's been, I think he's gone to every one. Yeah. He said so. He really uh, promoted it to us as something to be a part of. So cool. cool. I'm glad you're coming. 
Oh, yeah. We're excited. Yeah, absolutely. So there you go. A Corey Sadoff of the Trophy Mules. Thanks so much for coming in and sitting in with us, man, telling us Thanks. what you're up to and, and letting us know that Dennis listened to the wrong album. Yeah, the, the, you know what? You listen to the you listen to the albums, man. Like, hey, I guess that's the, the way you great. say goodbye. I guess that's the way you say goodbye. Is that the way? Right. That's got to be a song. I'm, I'm just assuming that that's another song. Good just, that's good. I'm trying to make up for <laughs> you, it. You're you're doing great. You're I'm just doing happy that great. someone listened to our stuff. Uh, hey, yeah. know, old new other. I swore I was on the new one, but I guess I, I just got more work. Twelve songs, you know. It, it's not that hard. Twelve. No. It's not that. I kept that thinking, doesn't. you know, these twelve songs are going by awful fast. Yeah, that's because so. there wasn't twelve. No, it's only six on that one. Half, uh, half. I can't <laughs> wait to hear Chupacabra Valentine. I got to admit it. You know, there's another cryptid you could write about, Momo the monster. He's from Missouri. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yes, Momo. I don't know. I don't know the story of that. It's up near Hannibal. You're gonna have to do a little research. That could be a song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Momo meets the Chupacabra. Yeah, basically Sasquatch, but yeah, oh, yeah. You know, it, Our it's, version. It's a Midwestern Sasquatch. He's got a different accent. That's true. All. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, so hey, thanks, uh, thanks for coming over, Corey, and, and telling us about the Trophy Mules. Good luck with the show. Uh, not only the show June second out in Campsville at the Trinity River Fest, but all the show you guys are playing. Yeah, uh, you're 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 always out playing. So uh, uh, good luck to you with all of that. Uh, we wish you well. Yeah, we wish you well. And Josh too. <laughs> uh, I'll tell Josh. Can, yeah. can we be. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, could we be expecting another album in the next six years or what? <laughs> uh, it'd be less than six years. Than We're going to shoot for like excellent, two years. Excellent, excellent. Are you saying that through shatterproof eyes? <laughs> yes. He's, okay. he's just going <laughs> to keep throwing them out there. <laughs> uh, hey, I so. don't want to give you a diamond surprise. <laughs> yeah. See? Yep. See what he does? Uh, We're working hey. in there. I, I, I do like the effort. Uh, <laughs> you know. Keep your effort. All these songs are downloadable and... Streamable. There you go. Everywhere. And yeah, and, and how everywhere that cares. And, and you can check this all out at thetrophymules.com. Correct. YouTube channel. Yeah, we're on YouTube as well. Easy to find. The trophy mules popped right up for me. All right. I don't know. Is that how you promote that channel, right? The trophy yeah, just mules. Type yeah. us in on YouTube. I think you picked a good name. Yeah, I, I think so too. Yeah, problem Thanks. searching that. I mean, because that's really what it comes down to for a band. A name yeah, you can it, search that's actually you. That is big, yeah. yeah. I mean, there are some bands where their name is like uh, just a common name for something. And Cottonmouth. Yeah, well, that would be one that examples, gets but, ripped off a lot. Yeah. Dot org. I, it helps. I mean, I think that helps for exposure to yeah. have a unique name that there's nothing else really similar to. Yeah. Right. There you go. It doesn't help to trademark it unless you're Tina Turner. Well, unless you can afford to, to do something about <laughs> it. So I've there, done it. It doesn't matter. Go. There's plenty of cotton mouse going, ah, screw it. Those <laughs> so guys the, are nobody. So the key is get a good name like the Trophy Mules, and there won't be a problem, I right. guess. If well, no and get, get, it, and get it, the so. web domain. Yeah. yeah, there you go. So you got the trophymules.com. People can find you on Facebook. Mm-hmm. People can find you on YouTube, all over the place. Just look for the Trophy Mules, and you will find them. Uh, download their songs. Definitely get out on June second to Campsville, Illinois. Come down to the Trinity River Fest and check them out with a, a, just a host of, of great bands mm-hmm. playing there uh, for a great cause. Thanks again, Mr. Corey Sadoff, for coming on down. Thanks, Thanks a lot. to uh, all of you out there in Radio Land for tuning in. And uh, everybody, what are you gonna do? I guess that's a way to say goodbye to the Blood Red Cardinal who has no room to fly. And, and the only way you're going to find out what all that means is, is to get the ch- new album. Is to check out the new album by the Trophy, Trophy Mules. Mules. Uh, so de- definitely get out there to Trinity River Fest June second, third in Campsville. And if you can't make it to Campsville, just get out and support local music and art. 